All right, so our first definition is individuals, and that would be the objects described by a set of data. So that could be people, animals, or if I really want to be general, it could be things. And this is the first class that I'm doing notes in. In the back, can we see? Am I using a good color? Okay. The skylights can throw off my lights sometimes, so if you can't read something I'm doing, like Wilmer, especially you, way in the back, please let me know. Okay. Uh, next definition is variables. And variables are any characteristic of an individual. Sorry, that's bad pen. Variables can take different values for different individuals. And if I ever go too fast, please let me know. Is everybody okay if I move it up? So um, we have two different variables that we're going to define today. The first one is categorical variable, which places individuals into one of several groups or categories. I also, um, I teach math for a reason, <laughs> sorry, I stumbled on spelling categories, even though categoricals right there, you would think that I would have been able, I, ha I hesitated. If I misspell something, I'm sorry, <laughs> okay, um, I, I will eventually misspell something, and by the way, just to get it out in the open right now, data, which we will use the word data a lot. It is both plural and singular. So if I say data is or data are, they are both correct, okay? I always have kids, I'll say data are, and they're like, that's not right, it is correct. That one I do know for sure. It's one of the few, <laughs> you laugh at me, it's one of the few English things that I do know for sure for this class. So some examples of categorical variables would be gender, hair color,
Um, they tend to be things that we use words for, not numbers, but there are, of course, exceptions to the rules, Avery. Um, height is actually a quantitative variable, which we will um, define on the, the flip side of your paper. Um, but one that uses numbers but is actually categorical would be like your student ID number. So we could say that a student in the, what, 100,000 to 200,000 category, um, even though it's a number, it would be a categorical variable. But for the most part, categorical variables um, do not use numbers. But there are always exceptions to the rules. Everybody okay if I click? So then our other type of variable is quantitative. And this we use numbers for. So quantitative variables. It's the second bad pen I've got today. Oh, cool. Um, quantitative variables take numerical value for which arithmetic operations make sense. And that's just a fancy way to say that if we found the average, it would actually make sense. You're not going to find the average favorite color, but we would find the average income or age. So um, an example, income, age, and like Avery said, height, those are all things that we can describe by saying, oh, the average income of this company is blah, blah, blah. The average age of the AP statistics class is 17, I'm just guessing there. So, luckily now we're done with definitions. Whew. Okay, sorry. I I try not to go that fast, but I was a little worried. I'd run out of time today. Um, so then down below, last thing, um, although you will see, I do have an exit task. That's one for you guys to try on your own um, before you leave. But I like to include the type of questions you're going to see in your homework. So this is similar to what you will see tonight, or if you start it in class. I'm going to try and zoom in. Does anybody want to read from me? The first few days of school are my least favorite, because I talk. I don't like to talk. Nobody wants to read? All right. Census at School is an international project that collects data about primary and secondary school students using surveys. Hundreds of thousands of students from Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, and the United Kingdom have taken part in the project since 2000. We use the project's websites, random data selector, to choose 10 I can't read, so this is why somebody needs to read for me. To choose 10 Canadian students who completed this survey in a recent year. The table below displays the data. So we have the province. So that's like state, if you were um, didn't know that. So where they live in Canada. 
gender. Um, it got cut off, but it should say languages spoken. So this kid speaks four languages, they speak two, the rest speak one. Handedness, so whether they're right-handed or left-handed. Um, this also got cut off, I'm sorry. This is their height measured in centimeters. And then this one to me is just weird. It's their wrist circumference measured in millimeters. And then this is their preferred communication. Does anybody really prefer to communicate through Facebook? Like, I, I wonder when this data was taken. Because they keep it from year to year. So even though they've been doing it since 2000, they have like 20. I don't think they've collected the data. They have 20 years of data. That came back in the 2000s, right? Actually, wait a minute. When was Facebook even created? I don't do Facebook, sorry. It's a very weird thing to me. All right. <clears throat> so down below, um, we have three questions. We're going to use the table to answer. So the first question is, who are the individuals in this data set? So um, I guess I shouldn't say we're going to use the table. The answer to that is actually up in the paragraph. So um, this class, the paragraph, I know a lot of times in math you can kind of skip over the paragraph because you follow steps when you're solving an equation. A lot of times in statistics, the answer is going to be hidden in the paragraph. So it tells us that we chose 10 Canadian students, and those are the individuals that are described by the data set. And another bad pen. there a glare on the pencil for those of you in the back? No? Okay. My orange pen didn't want to work, so I got rid of it. Um, so then the next question is what variables were measured? And we're going to identify each one as categorical or quantitative. So um, the table tells us what variables were measured. Those are the things up across the top. So province, gender, languages spoken, handed, um, height, wrist, and then the communication. So um, for this, rather than write them all down here and put a C for categorical or a Q for quantitative, I'm just going to put a C or a Q above each one. So province, um, we wouldn't be able to find the average province, so that is a categorical variable. Gender, that was one of the examples I gave as categorical. By the way, um, you will see trick <coughs> questions that will tell you that um, if they're only working with male and female, they'll say something like female is the number zero and male is the number one. And then they'll put a uh, one here, a zero there, and they give you a list of numbers. Well, it's still gender, so it's still categorical even though they changed it to use numbers. So um, that's the pretty much the only categorical variable I've seen where they try to trick you by using numbers to describe it. Um, number of languages spoken, that is quantitative, because we could find the average. Candidness, that would be categorical. 
height. That was one of the examples that I talked about for quantitative. <coughs> we can find the average height of those 10 students. We could also find the average wrist circumference, so that's also quantitative. And then communication um, preference, that would be categorical. We can't find the average there. Are there any questions so far? All right, and then the last one there is to describe the individual in the highlighted row. So that's this one right here. There are multiple ways to describe this student. I'm going to give you an example. That doesn't mean it's the only way. And yes, sadly, it is just a list. Okay. So this student that is described, um, and I kind of, I tried to make it make sense in the list, but like I said, my way is not the only way. So I started by saying he was a left-handed male. So then I have two done right away. Who is, when my pen is dying, can tell I haven't used these pens for a while, huh? Who is 157 and a half centimeters tall? Hundred and forty seven millimeter wrist, speaks four languages, prefers texting, and is from Ontario. So like I said, I just made a list of the things that show up in the table. You don't have to do it in the order I did it. If you're better at English than me, which you probably are, you might be able to do it in a more concise way. Um, any questions? One last thing I want to say. I know the bell is going to ring really quick. Okay. Um, teaching you guys how to use math books. Page six, okay? One through five odd, so one, three, and five, and then seven and eight. I always try, if it's not review, to stay under 10 questions, because there is reading and writing in this class. So. We just uh, you, honestly, since we ran out of time, I don't care. I won't check it. So page six, there is stuff above it. The exercises start down at the bottom, okay? Yeah, it's on this. It's on the orange one, and it's actually on your note sheet. Let me just do it. Like I said, I don't collect homework, so I don't really care what you put on, you can do it on. I've had kids literally do the whole unit homework on the back of this, and then when they turn this in, they give me all their homework too. So that's for Yes. So if I don't see you till Friday, so I mean, if you don't do it Have a good rest of your day.